So, seek ye first the kingdom. This is this is the kind of question now that our corner argument that's a way, that is a red herring. Well, is that law or gospel? Hmm. And you can go grammar on it. Well, it says it says seek you. You seek the kingdom. So that's that's law. Okay, what's the kingdom? Well, that's actually the gospel. So now you've got the law to seek the gospel. It's a paradox. My brain explodes. I, it's the wrong way to talk about what the Bible says. It's the right way to point out someone's trying to justify themselves. Hmm. So if you've got, you got someone who's like, you need to seek the kingdom with all your heart or you won't be saved. Okay, dude, you just missed, you just confused long gospel there. Okay. But to see that seek ye first the kingdom is Jesus' encouragement to believe in the gospel. Mm-hmm. And to believe in the gospel isn't about what you're able to do. I mean, our confessions are so clear on this. The Bible's so clear on this that that for you to believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit has to regenerate you. It's a gift. You've gotten it. So now you get to seek the first, seek the gospel, seek the kingdom, because God's doing it for you, which is, go figure, actually gospel at the end of the day. That he's promised to you. That he's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, and all of your efforts, which are but filthy rags by themselves, are now redeemed by the blood of Jesus to be acceptable in his sight. So you please him, rightly so, with your works. So do them. Seek the, seek the kingdom and stop worrying about whether it's law or gospel as you seek it. Love the Bible. Chase Jesus. Praise his name. I mean, it's... The question, is that law or gospel, guts the text. It guts it. It steals its capacity to just inspire you to want more Jesus. Exactly. Which is what Jesus is going to do in you by the word, even though technically I guess you could say it's law if you really want to to bastardize what it means. So thank you, Stephanie, for that little foil to play with there. Um, I'm not against law and gospel. I am against what most people mean when they say law and gospel these days. I love what our confessions say about it. I think we should read those often. People don't. They argue and argue and argue, and then they they read it once in college. You know, it's come on. Um, and the third use, all the more. Anyone who starts talking about the third use is almost always, the next thing they say is not what the confessions say about third use. And by uh, third use, truly it is doing good for good sake because it is good. Yeah, right? Yeah, I have an understanding, yeah, a proper yeah, understanding. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're inspired to do it. As opposed to curbed into doing it. You're, you're doing it against your will. Now you're doing it because it is your will. It's like, and and so therefore... It seems to me like these arguments are just stealing the Christian freedom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what the radical Lutherans would say, actually. Um, yeah. it's interestingly, uh, see, they're trying to preach the freedom. I see. Yeah. Because the person who's saying third use isn't talking about um, how uh, the law... They're saying, most people are going to bring up third use are trying to say that at the end of the sermon, there needs to be, after you say law which condemns, and gospel, which saves, now there needs to be a section about what you're supposed to do. And that's what they mean by third use. And since you've heard the law and the gospel, meaning the second use and forgiveness of sins, before this, now, when you hear what you're supposed to do, you will be inspired. Okay. It's it's like... It's like robot land. Yes. It is, it is sophistry. It is uh, sophistry is the pretension to philosophy. It's it's false wisdom. Uh, it is it is trying to do like love by mathematical equation. Yeah. And as much as I love math, you can't calculate love. It, 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 it's not the result of calculus. Mm. 